Hello everyone, uh, welcome to Talk Talks. I am your host, Andrew Kistner, to the Oxford Center Talks. And today I have some special guests that are treating here at the Oxford Center all the way up from Texas, uh, which is very common for us to get uh, out of town guests. And uh, we were kind of listening to their story and their journey and I felt that it'd be awesome to have them on a podcast and uh, kind of hear their journey in depth and ask them questions about it. So today I have Brian and Mercedes, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and get started. So if you guys wanna kind of introduce yourselves a little bit, uh, Brian and Mercedes, thanks for being here. Thanks for having us. Yes, my name is Mercedes Arvizu, and I am, we are from Dallas, Texas. Um, and yeah, we are so thankful to be here with our son, Noah, and our daughter, Giselle, and our other son, David, but Noah's the one who's yep. getting the treatment. Yep. So tell me a little bit about, first, how long, uh, let's get some information about you guys. Uh, where in Texas are you guys from? Well, we are, we're both born in Dallas, okay. and we're both raised in Irving, Irving okay. Texas, which is just Dallas County. Got it. And um, so Irving, uh, we've been there all of our lives and we still currently li live there. Okay. So awesome. We kind of generally uh, divided from the South Irving to North Irving. So she was from South Irving, I was from North Irving. So we met in high school. Awesome. Yeah. Very, very um, good. And since she uh, um, kind of uh, went after me yeah. and, and <laughs> yeah, won, I get me, it. won I me over. <laughs> Uh, we've been together ever since. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys, how long have you been married? Uh, well, we've been together now for uh, going on 23 years. 23. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we've been um, married for? Since 2007. Awesome. Yeah, great. Yeah, me and Emily were uh, 2008, so you got married okay. a little one year before us, mm -hmm. so that's awesome. awesome. Love it. Yeah. So your journey, uh, Noah, is what we're here to kind of dive into uh, his case and his journey uh, mm -hmm. to recovery. Mm -hmm. And so tell me a little bit about um, his his birth. Where did, you know, what all went on there? Was everything completely normal? When did things go kind of, you know, south? Yeah, so um, I had a healthy pregnancy with Noah. And uh, on my third trimester, uh, I tested positive for group B, and um, which is, can be common. Uh, but I was told that I didn't have anything to worry about, and so I didn't really uh, do much research into it. Uh, although they did tell me that whenever I was going to um, go into labor, that they would give uh, they would give me two doses of um, antibiotics. antibiotics. Okay. Yeah, and so just as a precautionary measure, and um, and that they would keep us over for an extra night at in the hospital. And um, so, so to interrupt, what is group B? I don't know anything about this. Group B is a, um, I guess it's, it's like a uh, bacteria. Okay. Yeah, that's it's in, uh, it's in our bodies, but it's active at different times. Got it. Okay. Yeah, and so that's where um, we believe that Noah uh, got the bacterial meningitis from. Okay. Yeah. And so anyways, once he was, we only got, we were only able to get one dose of the mm -hmm. antibiotics because I um, delivered quicker than what they thought I would. And so, yeah, we were in the hospital. He was an ounce shy of nine pounds. Okay, healthy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah super healthy. healthy. And um, we stayed the extra night yeah. at the hospital and they uh, sent us home. We were very excited mm -hmm. we took him home with us everything was wonderful yeah. and about and Noah's was your second child our third third child okay yeah. so you're experienced you've got some things you know right. under yeah. the ropes here you know mm -hmm. what you're doing yeah okay yeah and so uh, we were with Noah at home enjoying him and our little family for two weeks and um, that's whenever everything changed for us. Um, now did you see, um, was there like, was this a sudden onset? Did this, did you see just get sick? You know, like sicker and sicker as, as time went on? How did this kind of play out? Right, it was a sudden onset. Oh wow. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was a sudden onset. So he was just perfectly fine. Um, and uh, whenever he, we fell asleep and I woke up to nurse him, um, that's whenever he was burning up. Mm. So we called um, the ambulance, because mm -hmm. um, he was very lethargic. Yeah. 
and so we called the ambulance and uh, we checked his uh, his temperature and it was 104. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For a two week old baby. That's two weeks. Yeah, that's yeah. high. That's not good. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it, it, it was pretty high. So 104 and uh, I mean, you could just feel him burning up through right. his clothes and, and mm -hmm. um, he wasn't. He wasn't really responding. He was just lethargic, and um, it's from from then on that everything started changing, changing for us. Yeah. And that was probably about six thirty a.m. Okay. Um, probably by seven thirty, eight o'clock, we were at Children's Medical in Dallas, mm -hmm. and just checking him, and things just started going down. I mm -hmm. think the biggest thing is whenever. Um, we stepped out of the out of the room so they can do the spinal tap. Okay. Yeah. And just going to the waiting room and then seeing this doctor carrying a baby running running to another room. Um, and that was your baby. That was our baby. <sighs> yeah. We we didn't, I didn't I didn't know. I think Mercedes asked me, was that Noah? Were they running with them? I, I saw them running, but right. didn't know it was him. And so right. nurse came to us and like, hey, uh, I need you to come with me. Like, we're like grabbing our stuff. And they're like, no, just. Leave your stuff. I'll take care of it. Just come with me. We go and we're. They take us to the emergency, and it's like the you know the movies where uh, I don't right. know if you see the emergency room. It's huge and there's like doctors and nurses running everywhere. That's what we walked into, yeah. and that's just from there everything was like fast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what happened? You know, kind of after that, did they tell you what was going on? They, um, they didn't really know because of the testing um, okay. and the the biggest thing I think they're the what they wanted to do was his heart rate was like at 140 160 oh, wow. which is really high for an, right. an infant and the way they lowered it was by placing an ice bag all over his mouth and nose <laughs> which it, it worked instantly oh, um, that's cool it went back up to 90 which they were like okay that's a lot safer than 140 right. 160 <laughs> So then they were like, okay, like we're gonna take him up to the NICU and um, um, we'll, we'll uh, check him and start him on some antibiotics. As we were going up with the doctor to, to the NICU, he got the call and like, he was like, okay, like he, he has meningitis. Oh, wow. We don't know which one and we have to wait. Because there's viral and bacterial right. Right. from what little I know about yeah. meningitis. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he's just telling, he just told us, like, we won't know until maybe two days um, to let the bacteria grow and see which one it is. Yeah. Right. So they started him on, I believe it was about six different antibiotics wow. at that time. But by that time, it was 8.30, I think by, by 9.30 that we were up in the NICU, he was, he stopped breathing and they put him on a ventilator mm -hmm. and... This was all like, once we went up there and they told us, okay, like you guys have to wait, you can't go in there. And we just see, you know, yeah. people scrambling and, and we're like, we're, we don't know what's going on. So. Oh my goodness. They're just letting us know, so okay, he's, he's uh, being intubated right now and just admit it. And I think the, the, the other thing was also that um, he was placed in a, in a coma or, and yeah. because his brain was swelling. <laughs> right. And the, the thing after that was like, okay, his brain is swelling. Um, they did the CAT scan and, right. and all that. They're like, um, and we could see it. Once we were let in, we could see his, you know, his skull was bigger than, than normal. Right. Yeah. And they were like, okay, like, I think the next, they were telling us the next 10, 15, 12 hours are important because if his brain keeps swelling. Right. The only other other uh, space there is is through the through the I believe it's called the spinal the right. uh, the brainstem, mm. Mm. and that would pretty much it said once it goes in there it's going to cut off everything. Right. So from then on, um, it was just one thing after after another. Yeah. Uh, and. He was he was septic as well, mm -hmm. um, so the bacteria was not only um, in his uh, spinal fluid and in all, all around, but also in his bloodstream and just. He got there. Um, they have this room uh, where there's another another doorway that you go in, wash your hands, clean up, put okay. a gown on, yeah. 
hat and face mask. Kind of right. sterile cleaning room. Yeah. Okay. So there was a, a child in there already, and I remember hearing the doctor say, well, a nurse say, oh, well, there's so-and-so in there already. Like, like take them out. Right. No one needs to be in there. Mm. Because his white blood cell count was, it was right. very, very low. So catching something would be just detrimental. Yeah. Yes. Um, were like, you add any, you know, more fuel to this fire, yeah. mm-hmm. there's a, a bigger problem. Oh, yeah. He, when he was out there, everyone ha- had to wear a mask around him. Yeah. They, they couldn't, and until they put him in there, we still had to wear a mask. Mm-hmm. Everyone that went in there, even right. if you came, came back out for a second, you had to put a new mask on, a new right. gown, and all that. So, yeah. so that's, that's kind of where, where we were for about three weeks. And he so was you stayed in, in the coma. NICU for three weeks? In the NICU, it was about... Was it three weeks or Yeah, two? it was about three weeks mm-hmm. in okay. the NICU. And then kind of what were what was the doctor's outlook in all of this? You know, over the three weeks, did their story change or were they, did, what was their, did they have any hope? Like what, what was kind of their outlook on his situation? Well, um, based upon their scans, because they did several MRIs, uh, they did more CAT scans as, um, and Pretty much everything that they can they can do for him uh, to to kind of see how he's doing. Right. You know, based upon uh, that, um, I think it was a week into it, they were telling us that he, uh, the probability of him making it out was pretty low. Mm. Um, our best, the window of opportunity that we were told, the window of opportunity was to just disconnect him from the breathing machine and just let him pass. So they encouraged you, let me get this straight, they encouraged you to, to pull the plug essentially and to let him go. Yes, uh, yes, from just the, the, the exact words was the window of opportunity. Wow. And what, w- what was outside the window of opportunity? Like, so we have a window of opportunity. What if we don't take that window of opportunity? Yeah. What was the, what, what did they say to you? So pretty much what they said was that, um, I'm just gonna rewind it just a little bit. They had taken us into a room and there was um, just a room full of specialists. Mm -hmm. I don't know, we were probably in there with about like maybe 15 different um, doctors, specialists, advocates. uh, And so it could feel like an intimidating space, you know, especially just because, um, I mean, we don't have that degree and that um, knowledge. Yeah, you're relying on the experts. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, I just remember uh, having a, my advocate with me, and so she's like, how can I help? And I was like, here's a journal. Uh, write down everything that you're hearing us talk about because I may forget about, I may forget some things. And so thankfully I did because that's part of our testimony. Mm-hmm. Um, anyways, um, so these doctors, they pull up all the scans on the screen, and each one of them uh, gives us their opinion about what they're seeing, and uh, and they're explaining to us what the scans mean. And so the doctor that was overlooking um, Noah's case, he told us that um, that yeah, there was just uh, damage done to all his brain. And so he said, what you're looking at is you're looking at a a, ch- a brain of a child who would be in a vegetative state. Ah, so that's the window. We're putting it together. I'm putting yeah. it together yeah. now. So that's mm-hmm. the window of opportunity is now we can pull the plug and end all of, the, of this for mm-hmm. any future frustrations right. and heartache yes. and, and yeah. everything. Otherwise, if we don't, uh, we you take home a lot of mm-hmm. more responsibility. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was the uh, best way of life for all of us. Yeah. Interesting. That's, that's, that's what it was. Yeah. The best way of life for you is to end his life. Yeah, is that for right? him and for us. Right. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. yeah. It was it was pretty traumatic to hear um, every doctor's opinion and <clears throat> right. and that they would advise us to to do that just to remove. Wow. So there was just no pretty much there was no hope, and so that's what we kept hearing over mm-hmm. and, and over again. And um, yeah, it was scary because you just you are relying right on these doctors and and their expertise and um, unfortunately um, all we were hearing was bad news and so it almost felt like what they were 
telling us was, or, or almost seemed like what they were trying to sell to us was like, this is what it is and this is what you need to do. Right. And if you don't do this, you're pretty much being selfish. Right. You know, mm -hmm. and so um, they gave us about um, a couple of days to think about it. Um, and they told us what it was going to look like when they removed him off of the ventilator and um, how mm -hmm. we would. Uh, so they're trying to prepare you for the decision they're hoping you make. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you decided not to go that route. Why yes. did you decide that? Um, so I think it really started first with um, there was a pastor that came into the room and um, he's a, a, a friend of ours, a great friend of ours, and he came into the room and uh, he prayed over Noah and he started speaking words of life over him. That was the first a person um, that outside of us that uh, was speaking positive things over Noah. Mm -hmm. And so that kind of, just, I felt like that um, had given me some hope. And um, and then there was, um, Brian and I were talking about this, how there was a time that we were just exhausted. Oh, I bet. We we're so exhausted, we we're so tired. <laughs> and um, I remember looking at stories um, on on my phone um, while I could hear like helicopters landing, mm -hmm. bringing children in, taking yeah. children out, right? So, um, and I just was looking at stories of out, you know, outcomes of people or kids who've had meningitis. What is that? What does their life look like? Right. And, um, and it was just all these sad stories and I was just crying and Brian wakes up and he's just, you know, uh, consoling me and he's like, you should stop looking at those stories, <laughs> <laughs> which is good that he, to he told me that. Uh, we've been there, me and yeah, Emily, because yeah. when we went to our developmental delay doctor and she says, oh, she has hypotonic cerebral palsy. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that is. Right. Mm -hmm. So I've been there and you yeah. start watching the videos. Okay, yeah. continue, sorry. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and so then Brian uh, starts telling me that um, he told me that I should look at stories or uh, things that would be, that would bring hope, yeah. right? That would bring life. And so um, I did that. I started to look for like miracle stories. And I came across um, Gianna's story. Yeah, and um, this was while we were in the hospital. So this is what, six, seven years ago? Seven yeah, years seven ago? years seven ago, years. 2017. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And um, I read the story and it just shifted things for me. Right. It shifted <laughs> everything. Like it was like if I had blocked out everything that they had told me in the other room where, you know, we could, that what we were looking uh, forward to if we kept right. Noah on the ventilator. And so really my thought was like, if God could do this for Gianna, he can do this for Noah. Yep. You know, and um, because I think it, it doesn't really matter how much faith a person has. Like when you're really placed in the fire, right? <laughs> right? You need uh, people to come alongside of you. You need to hear stories. You need uh, you need to be reminded, right? And uh, of the power of God. And that's what that was for me. That was a reminder of the power of God. And so. Um, it shifted things, and it was just like, okay, we're gonna fight for his life. Absolutely. Yeah. So talk to me a little bit about um, when did they release, uh, I'm guessing Noah went from the NICU then to just standard hospital, you know, whatever floor mm -hmm. that would be. Um, how long was he in the hospital total for your journey? Total, he was, we were in there for about six, six weeks. Mm -hmm. Six weeks, okay. Six weeks, um, so he, um, one of the things was that he, he wasn't breathing on his own, so, okay. so the ventilator was breathing for him. Uh, when we realized he was breathing over the ventilator was whenever, I mean, we were there already, I think about a little bit over a week. Mm -hmm. So we learned a lot of the, the codes and everything. We knew right. how to read everything <laughs> yeah. in there. So, I love it. You know, it, it, Breaking we, the code. Yeah, mm -hmm. and um, I walked in and I, saw, I, lo I always looked at the ventilator machine. Right. And I knew the numbers, and then I could see that 
um, the, the breaths per minute was uh, higher because I knew that they had set it, I think, a bit about either 30 or 40 per minute. And it was higher. It was a little bit higher. So I asked the nurse, I was like, so who raised the, the, the breaths per minute? Like, nobody, nobody's raised it. I'm like, oh, well, like, uh, I mentioned right. it to her and she's like, oh, she's looking at it and she's like, I think those are his. I think he's breathing over there. What right. the machine is doing. I'm like, okay. I'm like, so he's starting to breathe on his own. She's like, yes, yes, he is. And that was, uh, um, I think that was the day after um, we were given that, that window of opportunity. Right. Mm -hmm. So that was also one of uh, the right. answers that we were seeking from yeah. God, you know, God. Right. I think the big, the, one of the biggest thing was whenever um, her and me as well, we were praying. Right. And we, yeah. we were, as she mentioned, we were exhausted, we were yeah. tired, and we just, we were releasing everything that was within us because um, we hadn't done any of that together. So we started praying and we, we asked God. We told, we, we told God, God, we give Noah back to you. Yeah. Um, we give him back to you. If you want to take him with you, it's okay. We won't be right. mad at you. If you leave him here with us, whichever way you decide to, we won't be mad at you. Right. And I think after that, we had a, a peace came over us. Love it. Yeah. And sure enough, the next day is whenever that happened, and then he... Hadn't opened his eyes, so he right. opened his eyes. Um, Love it. And it was like, you know, kind of letting us know, letting right. us know, hey, you know, That's I'm, I'm yeah. here. So um, from then on, everything just, you know, a day or two, machine came off. Uh, he did have to go through the whole antibiotic um, steps, which is, I think, the full six weeks. Okay. Uh, and we were moved out of that room um, into the... Uh, I believe it's the 11th floor, the, the 10th floor. 10th floor. Mm -hmm. I think that's where the, because um, he did have seizures in there. Yeah. Um, was, when he was in a coma. When he was in a coma, he yeah. had seizures. So he was on three medications because one and two w was not controlling right. the, the seizures. So he was on three uh, medications. So we, they moved us to the neuro um, floor. Floor wing. Yeah. yeah. The, the wing. So you take, uh, you, you finally get to take Noah home. Mm -hmm. Talk to me a little bit about what things look like now that he's home. Mm -hmm. We were being told um, to just prepare uh, yeah. and, and, and get ready for mm -hmm. what, um, what he is going to be needing because right. of everything that the doctors were saying that uh, he might have. Oh, because absolutely. Yeah. You know, doctors uh, still in the scans were telling us, um, you know, he's he's probably going to not be able to walk. He's probably not going to be able to talk or... Um, They're trying to be realistic with right. you. Yes. Right. Prepare you. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes, they, they, they were. And, um, and just just one real quick thing was one, I think one, one doctor um, seeing the scans because, you know, I think every... Every Monday, they would switch. A new doctor would come in and okay. take over and would debrief him on each right. person. And then the one doctor, I remember Mercedes telling me, came in. He was just, he did not say hi. He did not say anything. He was just staring at Noah. And I believe he said, I'm like, I just, I don't understand. Um, you know, like, mm -hmm. I'm, I, I was told from this, from what, what has happened from the beginning. I see the mm -hmm. scans, but there's things he's doing that, he's not supposed to be doing. Right. Yeah. You know, which was, he was a baby, he was moving, he was, he would cry. Right. Um, so, from, from that on uh, going home, we just started looking in to see what we could do. And yeah. also, what was the next step for us? Right. Uh, not understanding what, 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 what was to come. But, we were just preparing ourselves to what what we could do um, for him. Yeah. Um, Mercedes was a, his is his biggest advocate in, in in searching everything for for him. So we we went towards what was best for Noah. Absolutely. And well, I think one one of the things is we never limited anything for him. 
Um, and that was one of the, the viewpoints that, that we had was just not just raise a child that would, we would take care of just, just to raise him normally, right. but to seek more for him Absolutely. to, to better, for, better his life and just continue to start that journey. Yeah. Right. So what was the first kind of therapy that you uh, put Noah in? Because obviously therapy is going to be part of your life. You have a kid with disabilities. Mm -hmm. What was the first therapy that you really, you know, pushed him towards? Yeah, so uh, Noah, uh, the first therapies he started doing was uh, through ECI. So he was doing, uh, we had different therapists coming into our house, uh, doing PT, mm -hmm. OT, and uh, a vision uh, therapist also uh, would come mm -hmm. and um, after that um, through our PT uh, we heard about another therapy called uh, InterX therapy. Okay, I haven't heard of it. Yeah, and it I hadn't heard of it either <laughs> before <Yeah>. that. <clears throat> so uh, that was the first therapy that we took Noah to, InterX therapy. Um, and one of our biggest pleas to God was that he would surround us with a medical staff, a therapist, doctor, specialist that um, were believers mm -hmm. um, because we wanted them to uh, not just rely on science, right? right. Or on results, but also uh, that they would receive their wisdom from God. Sure. And so then. Sounds like a good plan. <laughs> mm -hmm. I like this. Yeah. And so he, God just started doing that. He started answering. Um, our, our prayers and so now uh, with um, InterX therapy, er, InterX therapy um, I think really what sold us out was what sold us was just that um, the therapist uh, was uh, the owner of her company and uh, she was a God-fearing woman. So talk, what is InterX therapy? So InterX therapy is a non-invasive therapy. Um, it <clears throat> it can be um, compared to a little bit to like a TENS unit. So it stimulates nerves, okay. right? And um, and I'm definitely not going to um, be able to say exactly what That's okay. <laughs> it That's is okay. because there's We're so much behind here. it. We got it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, what it did was, uh, so it was just uh, something that was, that would help stimulate, okay. stimulate his body, his nerves uh, to relieve, uh, to release different. Um, I don't know what the word is called when um, where the brain uh, releases. Um, kind of like dopamine. And okay, different hormones maybe. Yeah. Uh, okay. So um, we prayed about it. Uh, we waited. Uh, I felt like God hadn't released us, and then like about six months after the research. Uh, I reached out, uh, we went in and the therapist uh, saw us. And um, I think one of the best things that happened was that she first prayed over Noah. Well, yeah, she prayed over Noah and I just felt like at home, like mm -hmm. I was safe there. Yeah. And so uh, they started doing treatment on him and um, he started raising his arms like he wasn't able to raise his arms before. He hadn't done it. And uh, maybe like a week after doing, starting the therapies at NRX, he started to lift his arms up. And um, shortly after, he starts to roll over. I just love all it. All these things. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so that was a big uh, game changer for us. Yeah. yeah. So we've done PT, OT, speech, vision, NRX therapy and Noah. Uh, Didn't had, you do hyperbarics at, at one point we somewhere? Did, we did um, 40 dives in Richardson um, of hyperbaric. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So, what led you? Uh, so, how did you end up at the Oxford Center? Um, well, first, let's, let's, where's Noah at now? And then we'll ask how you ended up at the, uh, before okay. you came to the Oxford Center. Where's Noah at now? Okay. So, um, yeah. The uh, they were t they told us that Noah would never be able to walk <laughs> or talk or eat on his own, and he was also uh, diagnosed as being legally blind. Okay. Um, nystagmus and uh, on the in his eyes, and um, that he would have a trach, a, a shunt, a G tube, and that he would have uncontrollable seizures for the rest of his life. Got it. 
he would become immune to all the uh, medications, yeah. seizure medications. And so, um, thank God, um, we are not walking with that not Noah now. Right. Noah does not is able to eat on his own. He does not have a trait. He does not have a G-tube or a shunt. Uh, no more seizures. No more seizures. Um, and he is bilingual. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he talks. talks <laughs> not only bilingual. can he talk, he can <laughs> talk in two languages. Exactly, yeah. exactly. He's bilingual and um, super smart. Mm -hmm. um, uh, he loves to he loves to eat. <laughs> yes, <laughs> he loves to eat. And they and said he wouldn't eat on his own. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so one of the things they did tell us, like he would never, he will never know who mom and dad is. Yeah. He will mm -hmm. never be able to distinguish y'all or know who you guys are. He mm -hmm. definitely knows who we are. Absolutely. He calls us by our names, and he's. Uh, so that's where we are with Noah. Now there is still some things that uh, the Lord is doing in Noah's. Um, body and his, and his right. uh, you know. There's still progress to be there's made. There's still progress mm -hmm. sure. to be made. So, um, yeah, there's a, a lot of sensory there right. that he, um, sensory imbalances and um, the nystagmus, although it's there, it slowed down yeah. a lot because before his eyes would flutter nonstop. Right. And so, like, throughout the years, um, we have seen that uh, definitely slow down mm -hmm. and he's able to control his eyes a lot more. And so, um, yeah, there's just, you know, he was, he, he uh, was having a lot of like uh, tantrums yeah. um, and uh, there was still uh, some global developmental delays yeah. there also with Noah. But for the most part, like all the things that they said that he would never be able to do at all, he's doing them, but he's, um, you know, the Lord's perfecting that in I him. I love it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what brought you to the Oxford Center? Yeah, so um, that's, that's the miracle story that when we were in the hospital with Noah, um, whenever, this was seven years ago, and he, um, they were just giving us that very, you know, grim, um, bad news about what his future would look like. Um, that's whenever I saw Gianna's story. Mm -hmm. And I researched it and I saw the Oxford Center there. Yeah, I started to uh, look at information about it. Um, <laughs> but the Lord had said it's not time yet. Mm -hmm. And um, that was hard. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> That <right>. was hard. <laughs> yeah. Been there. So, <laughs> so um, seven years later, which is this year, <laughs> He said, it's time. And um, it was just like, wait, what? <laughs> it's time, you know, because we right. had been waiting for seven years. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, and so that's how I feel like, so the Lord introduced us to the Oxford Center through Gianna's story and Tammy's pursuit mm -hmm. for healing. And, um, but he paused that for a second and he, he did other things in those seven years, and then now he released us to be here this year um, in 2024, mm -hmm. and um, that's how that's how we made it here. Yeah. Yeah. So Noah's been treating just for a couple of weeks now. Talk to us about some of the things that you've seen um, as far as progress made. Yeah. Well, um, as we as Mercedes said, uh, he is. He's able to, uh, he's very smart. He's able to yeah. s say words, uh, s one one word, and right. um, kind of let us know what he wants or needs. Uh, now he, right <clears throat> now, one of the things he's doing, he's putting words together. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. Sentences. Uh, Mercedes just mentioned, um, <clears throat> we had speech just a while ago, and he, yeah. he was just conversating. Like, it was it, the it, best <laughs> session ever. It was amazing. Is he having speech here? Yeah. Oh, He's awesome. Had, yeah, so he has speech here, uh, PT, and neurofeedback, as awesome. well as uh, the hyperbarics. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I love it. You dove in. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so we dove in. You know, we were like, we might as well do as much as we can while, Absolutely. while we're here uh, for the full month. And um, he's just, you know, that is probably one of the biggest things because we know he has a big vocabulary right. because of what he what we can ask him, okay, what is this? What is that? And he'll say it, but not putting the words together right. in Making sentences. Together, yeah, yeah, that's one of the things that we've been waiting for. And, right. 
I think one of the one of the things I've told Mercedes, I'm like, okay, well, like, we'll just once he gets there, just be ready because I think he'll he will be <laughs> nonstop because of his Love big it. vocabulary. And, um, that's that's just a big a big praise for us to be able to yeah. see that and he, hear it, right? Um, and to just live it. That's that's just what what God does. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Also, I want to add that um, on. Saturday we went to the um, Henry Ford Museum. Awesome place. Yeah, yeah, it was. And so typically Noah in new environments, um, he especially if he has to be yeah. on his feet. And loud. And loud, loud new environments yeah. where he has to be actively active. Um, he it's probably like a thirty minute. Um, if. Yeah, yeah, if, if a 30, 30 minute, minute he's good for 30 minutes yeah. and then after that yeah who knows after what's that, gonna happen yeah that's yeah, it I we got <laughs> pack up your things it's time to go <laughs> so um yeah we were there we first we had gone to the uh how um, uh, farmer's market in the yes. morning so he did some walking we there. live right down the street from there awesome <laughs> it's i love it there yes it's an awesome and awesome so time. um we we went there first and then we went to the um, museum after so he had been on his feet um, since the morning until afternoon, several hours. There was not one tantrum. Wow. He, mm -hmm. um, occasionally he would have accidents on himself. No accidents wow. on himself. Mm -hmm. No tantrums on his feet. Happy, happy. Mm -hmm. Walking, talking, exploring, looking. Right. You know, because sometimes it was felt like he was just focused, fixated on one thing, and right. he wouldn't take his um, his eyes off of that. But he was looking around, exploring. And um, before we came here, our uh, women's pastor had told us that um, we were going to know both God and Noah in ways that we would we never have known both of them. I love that. Mm -hmm. And it's so true. Like yeah. I'm getting to know my son in oh. ways that I had never known him, and it's just, wow, Lord, mm -hmm. it, you know, God yeah. is just amazing that He would allow us to be here, and that this was just part of um, the story, you know, mm -hmm. Noah's the story, the testimony, and um, the scripture that the Lord had given me at the hospital that is still something that we're anchored to is uh, Romans 4:21 which is fully persuaded that God has the power to do what he promised. Yeah. And it's there's times where it doesn't seem that way. Absolutely. We were talking <laughs> about that the other day. Uh, you don't really realize, um, we were just talking in the lobby mm -hmm. here, um, about God's plan yeah. you mm -hmm. know, and path for you until you look back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you see, oh, well, that's why I'm here. Yeah. And yes. I truly believe, I was telling Mercedes, I truly believe that God had this all from the beginning planned for yeah. our lives to put us here. Mm. Absolutely. You know. Yeah. Absolutely. We would have never gotten here without grace. <laughs> yeah, so. and exactly. That's one of the things also we were talking about last night and just seeing how God puts everything together because you know, we can we can plan and schedule things sure. as much as we want. It's not always going to be perfect and it's not always going to go the way we think it's going to go in right. our our mind. Yeah. But whenever we allow God to take control of that and for him to say, okay, this is what, what you are to do. Right. You can, once you get, like us, we're halfway through it, we look back and we can see everything, how God has scheduled, planned, yep. and just put the peop right people at the right time and uh, all the people that we've met, um, things that we're doing and what Noah is doing and, and seeing all of that, that that's one of the things that we can say you know that that's all god and and that's why that's one of the reasons why we always just wait on him yep and it's just been amazing how we can see i mean we can we can go through everything since um we met with um uh online uh on the zoom call which is the meeting for us to be able to oh the discovery session yes with emily. Discovery session. Emily. Yeah. yes yeah. Emily. um it was awesome. it was a quick thing you know like, as you asked how how did we decide to come here um i think mercedes just whenever we got the okay you know it's time she was like should we do a, a informative information ask for information or yeah. you know do do something where we can know more 
I'm like, yeah, let's do that. And we did. And we were, in, in my mind, I was thinking, okay, I like this, you know, um, this is pretty big. But then I was like, okay, after, after it, we, we finished and then we kind of looked at each other and like, okay, like, I think, I think it's time. So right. We're going to go move forward. Not having all the funds right. or any of the funds. <laughs> we're not like, having any yeah, of the funds. We're like, <laughs> yeah, we were like, um, but we were <clears throat> at peace. You know, we were like, okay, you know, yeah. God said. God's got the funds. Yeah. yeah. He, I, he, I he owned it, it off. He owned it. Amen. Uh, yeah. He said, uh, God owns cattle on Thousand Hill. He just yeah. sold one. Yeah. 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 Amen. <laughs> yeah, he, he owns everything. So we were like, okay, you know, like if God says it's time, it, he's going to make the way. And sure mm -hmm. enough, I mean, we met, I uh, believe it was like almost the end of April mm -hmm. was whenever we met. And making a trip from all the way from south to the right. north for mm -hmm. in within a couple of months is not easy and also you know if especially if you don't have the funds it's it's difficult and plus getting the month off and you know the whole family coming up right right is is hard but god just was knitting everything together yeah. and making it just work work at its right time yeah at absolutely. perfect time i love it mm -hmm. yeah. well hey thank you both so much for sitting down with me and kind of sharing your journey i've enjoyed, I've enjoyed it so much um, we are going to do a testimonial video. We're going to kind of get everything in one concise yeah. uh, thing next week, and we'll, we'll release that. But I love watching Noah. Um, mm -hmm. You would never know uh, when he walked through the halls that yeah. this mm -hmm. was the journey that came before him. Mm -hmm. So uh, I yeah. absolutely love it. And I'm yeah. glad you guys are here, um, and we're able to uh, help Noah as much as we can. Mm. Absolutely. Thank you very much for being here. Okay. Thank you guys for watching this episode of Talk Talks. Uh, we will see you guys next week. If you have any suggestions for content you'd like to see, please leave it in the comments. Please like and share, and we'll see you guys.